Greetings. Welcome to the first Zcash Show and Tell event. This series is basically about highlighting various projects supporting the Zcash ecosystem. Greetings. And Welcome to the first Zcash oh. Show and Tell I, I cannot hear you, Paige. I do not know what's going on. Hello? Hey. Oh, well, there, you're back. Okay, I heard a bunch of, like, you had a bunch of echo feedback, and then everything yeah. went silent. <laughs> Am I live now? Interesting. You've got you've got the YouTube playing, I think, and the Hangout or something at the same time, Paige. I hear. All right, like, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. <laughs> fine. Are, are we live? Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, yeah, I had two computers running, and the other one was playing very loudly that I didn't realize. So, if that okay. wasn't uh, clear, uh, we're turning it over to David right now. So feel free to go ahead with your presentation. Okay. Uh, First, just to say a few words about how I ended up working on all this madness um, with Zcash. I've known Zuko and Dara online on mailing lists for over 10 years. Um, the MedStyle cryptography and the capability security mailing lists. And I've been following Bitcoin since the very beginning. I was the person that pestered Satoshi offline to off list rather to a, hey, you should set up a Bitcoin mailing list. And then life intervened with me having kids and everything, and I just didn't follow up, follow up with Bitcoin. But I've kept track of what Zuko's up to for years and was following the progress of Zcash. And as it got closer to being a reality and started hanging out in the IRC for that about a year ago. And last spring, I had an unfortunate health incident with a botched surgery, so I missed too much work and was let go from my last day job. And so this fall, I decided, hey, let's dive in to the whole open source thing and start working on Zcash stuff. So I've been doing that for volunteering for donations since October and the very beginning of November launched the first version of Zcash for a non Linux platform, which was for the Mac. Um, that was originally just command line with the help of a forum user Mugatu who uh, was with their Google foo were able to help us figure out a silly thing to get libsnark to build on Mac. And then with the help of Zlatan Balevsky, I hope I'm not mangling his name, he and I worked on getting the wallet from Vaklanov, the swing wallet that, that Vaklanov put a ton of work into for Linux, getting that adapted for Mac and bundling all that up into an installer. Let me screen share the website here. Do, 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 application window, come on. This one for Zcash for Mac. And when you click get it now, you just get a nice, happy little, come on, download. You can do it. Oh, the beach ball. You get a nice DMG file I'd like you to do that's signed with my developer certificate. So when you go to, when you go to like double click that, I'm going to have to reshare. The windows, there's too many windows. Your screen sharing, okay. Stop screen sharing. <laughs> um, so then when you go to install, when you go to double click the DMG file, it just pops up the, you know, the little finder window and the little application folder and you just drag that on in. And then when you launch it, let's screen share that. Launching, 
don't know how the screen share is going to work with something launching. Let's do entire screen. Come on. It does this little verifying proving key. It does checks the, the hash of your proving keys. And if it's the first time you've run it, it also will download in the GUI, download the proving keys that Z, for the ZK snarks that Zcash needs. So you don't have to mess with downloading that in the command line or the browser or anything. You don't have to run in any command line stuff at all. And bing, you have Backlanov's wallet, but with additional stuff added by Zab. Z-A-B, Zab is Zlatan Bolevsky. He uh, works at a bank in London. He actually funded and worked with me on uh, Zcash for Mac. Um, getting all this done in December. So that's actually, that's a, like I said, that is a signed app that will run on Sierra. They switched things up in a, Apple did in their latest OS release, where you have to have a signed app. There's no more, oh, just install apps from anywhere. They finally tightened the thumb screws. So it has to be signed. So we that runs on Sierra and I have a little window here of things I'm going to say. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh, and, and someone from the Ethereum project also helped out with getting the command line running on the Mac in the first place. And um, so got that all in one installer for Zcash for Mac done near the right before the end of 2016. And then started working more heavily on Windows. And I've been working on various various tool chains trying to get Windows to compile either natively or cross-compiled or using Cygwin and was working on that in parallel with on the Macintosh version for a long time. And there is always, you know, there's so many little dependencies and versions have to be just right with everything Zcash needs. Um, and then after the beginning of the year, the guys from the Z Classic project, which is a fork of Zcash without the founder's reward, they were like, hey, if we pay you a little bounty, will you get your Mac version running on our thing? And I said, sure. And then started working with them on getting Z Classic running on Windows. And move RCX, <laughs> his handle is an assembly language command. <laughs> he he was the one who cracked the nut on getting libsnark working on Windows because the, some of the math libraries, libgmp specifically, that libsnark uses are not 64-bit clean on Windows. So that, that was just a big headache. And he got all that debugged. And we worked on the build system. And we got, I'm going to sh screen share again in just a minute. No, I'm in the wrong folder. Come on. Got that first working. I know this is Zcash, Zcash chat, but I'm going to show the first Zcash anything on Windows that we got. It was a crazy moment. Or maybe I won't. I don't have that installed in this virtual machine. All right. Not going to show that splash screen. But uh, <laughs> what I figured out, I had already gotten it. I'd already added code into it. Let me screen share now. I'd already added code to a, because it wouldn't compile in the first place, the part where it tries to, in Unix land, detect what your terminal window's width is and everything. I'd added code in there to do that, and we kept launching it, and Z Classic and Zcash, and we just got a bunch of, like, either nothing or garbage, depending on whether it was running in daemon mode. And I had this, the wild hair of, what happens if I launch it in PowerShell? And you launch it in PowerShell, ding, you get good old Zcash splash screen. And uh, that was a great moment. Um, I still list that as a release candidate um, on the forum page where I have the download for this. I haven't set it up its own website and domain yet. I'm going to wait for the all-in-one installer like I have for Zcash for Mac that does everything all at once. But um, because gtest doesn't work, the whole test suite isn't working on Windows yet. It is for Z Classic, but um, Mover, Mover CX got that working on Z Classic, but on Zcash, there's a few differences in the linking. Um, they took out a couple of things like the alert feature 
and I'm having trouble with that on Zcash still. So I'm not calling this like good and out the door until I get the full test suite running. And I'll show you Vaklinov's wallet. He got that. He put in, put in a bunch of time getting this, his swing wallet working specifically for, for Windows because all of the silly paths and everything are different on Mac and Windows and Linux, of course. Make sure that's stopped. All right, you're stopped. So you have to install these separately. It's all pre-release. If you unzip the uh, release candidate of like my command line Zcash and follow the instructions for downloading the proving keys and getting the Zcash conf all set up, then you can download his binary jar of his wallet for Windows. That's in the form. We'll put links to the form for all that down in the comments of this or the description if Paige does that. Um, click the, oh, come on. Oh, you're telling me to start it first now? I thought you launched it yourself. It's not launching it itself for some reason. It's supposed to launch it itself. Yes, pre-release. <laughs> So you fire it up like I had it started. Come on, you can do it. And you get, ding, this wall, the GUI wallet on Windows. And you can send from shielded addresses without with a memo and everything. Like, this is a test. I'm not actually going to send anything. I need a little bit of Zek in there. Whoa. I don't know what that sound in my headphones was, if that was this. Anyway, anyway, that works great. We've tested that a lot. But like I said, I do not have an all-in-one installer done for that yet. And don't want to release any, call something an actual release, a good enough release, until I get, all right, I stopped screen sharing good, until I get the test suite running, because even though things work. I want to make sure they all work before I call it good enough. And like I said, uh, Z Classic guys, move RCX. He was instrumental in getting that figured out, the stupid LibSnark things, because the math libraries that LibSnark uses are older than 64-bit Windows. And um, then I don't have anything to show, but um, a while back, over a month ago, I got Zcash ported to ARM64 on Linux. Um, that was because Robert Nelson who's a really big figure in the, op uh, the open source software and ARM community. He let me have access remotely to an ARM64 board and got that port going. And um, he since upgraded the OS on that to some bleeding edge Debian that it doesn't want to run on anymore. But thanks to Lustro, who runs the ZChain blockchain explorer for Zcash, he sent me a spare ARM64 board he has. That port soon. And... Um, a name that will be familiar to Zuko when he listens to this, um, because people have actually expressed interest in running a full node on their Android phones, because high-end Android phones can handle it. They can handle the resources um, for a Zcash node. And uh, Ka Ping Yi is sending me a, <laughs> a spare high-end-ish Android phone he has, since mine won't handle it, to uh, get working sometime soon, hopefully. Um, Zcash on Android with a freaking full node. If that sounds crazy, but I keep getting people saying, hey, it was going to happen on Android, and I don't mean a thin wallet. I want my private keys on my phone, so we're going to go there, but uh, first I've got some cleanup stuff to do with getting documentation and tons of things written and uh, getting the all-in-one release out, and down the road I have some more work with uh, LibSnark portability and mostly gotten a version of LibSnark that completely adheres to C++11 standards, um, which it, it doesn't right now. It compiles with that flag, but it's not really compatible, like fully compatible, com compliant. And uh, merging all the different OS releases into one source tree. Um, they've done that on Z Classic. Uh, Mover CX got that done. I haven't backported any of that yet. Um, I still have too many branches and too many repos, but need to merge all that down and... Uh, Let's see, Paige, I think that's the main stuff I had to show. Do you want to take it back for right now? Great. Um, I guess uh, 
just to reiterate, because there was like a weird issue in the beginning of when I was talking, I think my okay. mic came unplugged. So some of what I said wasn't even on the on the live stream. But if anyone has any questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, if you don't, or if you want to like kind of consider some questions, uh, David's on our forum and the community chat, which there are links to in the description. And any um, uh, any links that David wants me to put in the description, I will also add. So um, I did notice a question not not related to your port work at all, but um, someone essentially is asking what you think about Monero. Um, um, that's uh, kind of the general question okay, that a lot I of have, people ask. <laughs> I, I don't have like a deep familiarity with it, but it's kind of like from what I understand about its whole ring signature thing, it sounds like it's kind of more of a, probabilistic privacy you're not really you're not shielded to the level you are with zk snarks and um i haven't really interacted with that community much because some of the founders of it were had very flame-like behavior said negative things about zcash uh just in on twitter and i was just like making pointing out some technical things not trying to be provocative and uh, i'm not going to mention any names i don't like bad blood between projects there's I've had some altcoin yes. drama myself in the last week, and nobody wants that. I don't. Nobody wants drama. I don't want drama in my life. I mean, like Zuko pointed out in the forum recently, all crypto coins, including Bitcoin, added up are a tiny drop in the bucket of all of fiat money of just dollars. Not even compared to pounds, British pounds, or euros, or the Chinese. However you say, I can't pronounce it. Any one of those, all cryptocurrencies added together are a drop in the bucket compared to any one of those fiat currencies. So we really should all be working together. And I know with the trading markets, investors are kind of cutthroat because they want to get the best return. But um, it really should just, I think it's better off if we all just cooperate in a friendly fashion and, you know, borrow features, help each other out with things. Because if any any of these things are going to have mainstream acceptance. If you're ever going to be able to pay for your groceries by swiping your phone or having a QR code scanned at the grocery store, we all need to work together. And that day is a ways off. And I mean, right now, you know, all my income in the last three, four months has been from donations, most tiny bit on PayPal, but most of that has been um, anonymous Zcash donations. Some of it's been Bitcoin and stuff. Zab, again, Zlatan Bolevsky, he... He dropped several Bitcoin, and I mean like whole Bitcoin, to keep me going in December while we got Zcash for Mac out, and he dropped some more for uh, to keep me going on the Windows stuff. And so, um, yeah, but I have to always turn that into dollars. And, you know, the rent and groceries thing, if we're ever going to be able to pay for our rent and groceries with Bitcoin or Zcash, Monero, Ethereum, anything else, we need to, like, not be, like, attacking each other. So, um I don't totally have a, agreed. <laughs> yeah. So I don't have, I don't have a good specific I don't have a specific opinion of Monero except I found the community hostile before I even stuck my toe in the water. And good I know to that's know. not every that's um, not everyone's experience. I know people have had the exact yeah. opposite experience, but that was Twitter and some totally. people say, Oh well that's just Twitter and you know, Twitter doesn't have to be a hostile place, you know, regardless of topic. <laughs> it often is, regardless of topic, a hostile place. You know, put on your I know you Put on your put on your asbestos like underwear and keep your block hand strong on on Twitter, but um, yeah. Anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah. No, I I think it's uh it's a good question to sort of um talk about the general ecosystem of all the cryptocurrencies because you are I mean you essentially are working uh, with Zcash and Z Classic um which is yeah, kind of like a, a microcosm of that greater yeah and that's that's mostly, world so that's mostly been friendly there was a little bit of tension over the last week but i think we've smoothed that out but uh, <laughs> growing people, pains that's all it it's is. growing it's growing well, pains and and people some people have a mindset of like oh if you're working for more than one coin you're hurting this one that you're working one of the ones you're working on 
And it's like, mm. it's like, well, you know, all the base code that Zcash started with, that was like two years and a huge team of Zcash working, you know? So I don't think people should get angry if, I backport stuff that Z Classic contributed. You know, it's like most of the code came from upstream anyway. And I know that Z Zcash pulls from Bitcoin, cherry picks commits from Bitcoin. And I know you yep. guys send stuff upstream. And I'm at yep. some point have some code from from one of my Windows forks that uh, of Zcash that I'm going to send upstream. I've got a. I'm currently cross compiling from Linux to Windows, but I do have a fork that uses MinGW64 natively on Windows. Um, and when I finally get around to adding all the cross-compilation cross fixes, when I get all those pulled into that, I have a, a built what's called a builder in the depend system of Bitcoin to build natively on Windows instead of cross-compiling because the B Bitcoin people, they do all their Windows builds on Linux and cross-compile. And People have been crying out in the wilderness in forums I've seen for years, saying like, oh, will someone please do a native builder for 64-bit Windows? Well, I have one now <laughs> that should work with Bitcoin. And at some point in my copious free time, I'll break that out and send a pull request upstream to them. And then people can build Bitcoin, you know, just on Windows. I mean, there's instructions for how to hand compile it a piece at a time, all the dependencies on Bitcoin Talk and other places. And that's what got me started with building Zcash on Windows was going through all those Bitcoin forum posts for how to get all of the dependencies built for Zcash because they're almost almost all the same. And um, but it's really painful to do that by hand. Well, I think the general community appreciates all of your your hard work with this. And with uh, your first answer about Monero, you kind of hinted Ooh. at um, financing your development, but someone generally asked how you finance yourself. I don't know if you have anything further to uh, elaborate on that with. Um, it's mostly been donations. I've done some stuff, some contracts, some tiny little side contracts here and there. People are like, can you help me do this integration of this Zcash or Zcash related technology on like, I've done work on block explorers for people for Zcash or forks of Zcash. There's other, there's other hairier, woolly things out in the wild that have forked from Zcash that aren't very mainstream. I had some of those people pay me to help them get Insight working because I got in, because of, who was it on your team that does? S, I know, STR4D. Is that Jack Grigg? Yeah. No. Yeah, Jack. Jack did the uh, Insight for Zcash, and uh, I was working on a, on a project that didn't get launched with someone else, but um, to enhance that, that didn't get off the ground. But from what I started with that was being able to use that in a different repo in GitHub than all of his repos. Um, and so somebody on another coin that's a fork of Zcash had, had me work on that for them and done some other little side things. People wanted documentation written for stuff. But it's almost all been donations. Um, the number one thing was Zlatan Bolevsky um, in December. And then it's been the other biggest ones have been some anonymous ones. Um, some decent sized anonymous Zek donations to one of my shielded Z uh, donation addresses. And the uh, mining community has, thank you mining community has finally started showing a little love because you know, the more platforms, you know, what makes the Zek they mine have value is demand. And what drives the demand is, you know, more users and where are the users, the users are on windows. And yes, that's some of the true. Some some people some some people in the mining community have been like, well, we're already paying the twenty percent founders reward thing, but I've come back with some things that uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but things that Zuko has said online about you know about just the funding levels of Zcash company, Zcash Electric Coin company, whatever you guys are called, um, <laughs> that you guys have zero enough zero coin electric zero coin, coin. yeah, it's a mouthful. I, everyone just types <laughs> Zcash Co online, uh, <laughs> but you guys. You guys took enough venture funding and the founders reward slice, which you know mostly goes to investors, not, not to Zcash Co. But um, you guys have enough from what I can tell about your what he said about your burn rate and your funding level. You guys have enough funding to keep going and maintain the Linux reference implementation and keep enhancing that and keep the network stable. Um, but if you were to hire a ton of people to do like GUI client development. Those people don't come cheap when you're paying market rate in Silicon Valley, and you'd probably have to raise more funds and 
possibly would lose control to outside investors. Then it just be which, which from what I gather is not the situation right now. Zuko and you guys don't have to do what any of those investors on your about page tell you because you guys didn't sell off too much of the company. And you know, I spent 20 years working for venture, mostly venture funded startups before I started doing this. And that has just been like pain and ruin more times than not. But you know, so I've pointed that out. I'm like, look, you know, yeah, they could do GUI clients for everything, but they'd probably have to double their staffing or something or close to it. And then, you know, the founders reward slice probably wouldn't be enough to keep you guys going. Answer to that. And and I don't need if, I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't I only need forty to fifty zek a month to live. I don't have an elaborate lifestyle. I'm not a materialist. <laughs> I'm a Buddhist. <laughs> and so my two kids and I, we don't need a lot. Uh, we're in Tucson, Arizona. Cost of living is very low. You know, like I said, 40, 50 zek a month. And I've been getting that in donations. And sometimes it's been like a near thing near the end of the month when rent's coming up. But the community so far has been pulling in. And like I said, the mining community has been starting to send uh, more donations recently, I think, as Windows has like finally arrived on command line. And once I get an all-in-one installer out, where it's just download this to install, and it gives you the full node and everything, and down and the GUI from Vaklanov, and downloads the key, proving keys. I think we're going to have the user count go up a lot because I know that's a big awesome. barrier. Um, let's uh, move on to some questions. All right. Um, I actually want to throw one in um, regarding the the Windows and Mac port and the memo field. Is there uh -huh. a, like an internal memo decoder in those UIs? There is not. That is one of the things I want to add to that is either a standalone GUI to read those. There is not a memo reader in Vaklanov's thing. Um, okay. He, he really needs your donations like – I mean, he has a day job and I don't, but he really needs your donations because he's been putting in a lot of work for very little financial love on that. And he's about burned out and we may not see that feature from him. Um, it'll take me longer to do it since I'm a really rusty Java developer and he's not. <laughs> well, maybe we um, can host him in a future show and tell as well. That would, um, that'd be great. That'd be great. I'm sure he'd probably some love of his that. Work. Um, actually, but, uh, um, th another question oh, about the... There, Okay, Go oh, ahead. just real quick, there is a command line yeah. Z message, Z, yeah. ZMSG, Z message will will read will read the me any any memos sent to you, um, and that that's a that command line program's uh, on why are you sleeping's GitHub and that we can put the link to that in the description. I'll send you that. Yeah, why not? And, um, we'll uh, we'll post we'll add all these links in afterwards. Yeah, um, but and that's, yeah, that's a really awesome tool as well. And that's written in Go, and that runs fine on Mac. I haven't tested that on Windows yet, but I'm pretty sure Go exists. Go exists for Windows, as far as awesome. I know. Um, I don't know um, what you have to do build it. You had another question. Yeah, I've got like quite a few actually. Um, we'll we'll keep you. going for like uh, five or seven minutes or so. Okay. Um, so uh, related to that, um, someone asked, "Do the ports have?" Um, I mean, you showed the Windows UI. Uh, you also have a Mac UI as well. Mm -hmm. um, they're asking if uh, there's QR code support at all. There is not, and that that also needs to be on on the feature list. Cool. I'm actually so we'll typing see that, that because in the, at some point, if if, Vac, if Vaclanov doesn't add that, at some point I want to. Um, cool. Another th another thing that I've gotten some requests and a, a few tiny bit of donations to put that on the list is to add to that um, and I might do this on Mac first um, but people wanted a Windows an additional little UI thing to integrate I might integrate some third-party mining software in addition to just Zcash itself because those mm -hmm. things are uh, for GPU mining on Windows especially they're a bear to compile the open source ones that are available or, or even the binary ones that are out there they're command line apps and people struggle with them a lot um, so at some point, I want to add into Zcash for Mac and Zcash for Win support for those to just turn that on and off and detect what kind of GPUs you have and just uh, fire up the appropriate third-party miner. Yeah, that would be super sweet. Um, uh, Nathan from Zcash actually asks, what do you 
uh, think the main pain points are with the GUI wallets that you have already built? I actually, or are there any that you've noticed? Um, the the main the main thing that's a that's a that's a bother is um, when you're sending from transparent addresses, it doesn't have the feature like because you guys have the backward compatible API stuff from Bitcoin for transparent addresses, you know, the mm -hmm. send many command instead of z send many, where you can you can you don't have to specify a from address. You just specify the amount and where it's going to a transparent address. And then it'll sweep from all your little tiny, because you end up with all these little, like, little auto-generated change addresses with tiny bits of Zek in them and stuff like that. And if you, like, use the, for instance, the Jax wallet, which only supports transparent addresses, those wallets all, from what I can tell, use the Bitcoin API. And they're just, and so you don't even know what address you're sending from, and they just sweep all the little, coins that are in little change nuggets dangling around. Yeah. Um, that's probably the biggest pain point. Um, the other, aside from that, right now there is a race condition on Zcash for Mac that sometimes when you fire it up, I keep meaning I need to put a, a link on the web page about this. Um, sometimes when you start it up, you get this like evil looking error message crash box. And that's just that there's a race condition because what it, if, Zcash D isn't running, it starts it up. And because that's one way, like say if you like upgrade, you can upgrade your Zcash D independently of Zcash for Mac. You can like, hey, there's a newer version. I'm gonna compile it myself, or or Dave Mercer has a new like command line binary for Mac, and you can if you put that in user local bin, it will it will in, and start that up first. You can like upgrade that independently of the GUI. But um condition when it starts it up itself, sometimes you get this crash screen. And you just have to sit there and wait a couple of minutes and and then launch it again. And it's supposed to catch that. It's supposed to trap that. And sometimes it does, and it just has a little gooey progress bar. And sometimes it doesn't. And it's been really hard to uh, to track that down because it's supposed to be catching it, and it sometimes does, and it's a race condition thing. So that's those are the only two big pain points I know are that uh, okay. you can't sweep from more than one T address at once. You have to send just from one. And um, and uh, there's a there's a stupid startup crash thing that sometimes happens. On a related question, and maybe uh, this will be the last one. Um, what what technical features or community developments do uh, do you hope to see in Zcash in the next six months? Ooh, number one that I know a lot of people want is selective disclosure. <laughs> oh, I know yeah. You, I know you guys are working <laughs> on that. <laughs> I know you guys are working on that. Um, selective disclosure and maybe faster ZK snarks. Yep, those know, seem know, like the two ones that I, I hear I know about a little, as well. a little bird, a little bird, a little bird who's one of the Zcash scientists told me you guys, that you guys are possibly going to like, or might be working on, I don't know if it was they were working on or Zcash Co is working on, but a circuit that's faster, that's a lot faster for generating proofs than the one you have right now, and not just changing the pairing parameters, but, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to say like who said that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciated. Um, in terms of uh, general, for people listening, general Zcash development updates, we started doing weekly developer updates um, that we post on Fridays. I, uh, we just posted one a couple hours ago, so you can stay up to date with all of the engineering happenings within the last week and what we intend to do in the next week. Um, and I think um, perhaps the rest of the questions we can we can bring over to either the forum or the the online chat. Um, but thank you so much, David, for yep. uh, being the first uh, test subject for this show and tell uh, series. <laughs> um, we're like you were definitely the first person that came to mind for a lot of us. So really happy to have you on, and thanks for all of your awesome work. And hope right, you get you guys. A, a bunch oh, of donations my... from this. <laughs> I hope I get some too. <laughs> we'll post. A, we'll post all the links again. We'll, we'll post, post all, all links, links, and I'll post um, some of the donation addresses you can give to David in the description. 
Yeah, I've just got so, I've got a I've got a uh, page of all of them, but but I know Vaklanov. We'll put Vaklanov's out there and, and links to his stuff too. Sounds good. All right, thanks everyone for listening. We'll do another one of these in the near future, perhaps uh, in a, a couple weeks or a month. We'll we'll see who we come up with. Stay tuned and thanks for listening. <laughs>